Okay, hi students. Let's talk a little bit about discoveries in astronomy and how discoveries are made. So it turns out that all we know about astronomy in the solar system, at least anyway, uh, goes something like this. If we have the sun here, and let's just map out the planets quickly here. We should know this stuff. So my very energetic mother just served us nachos. These are sort of all the planets here that we're familiar with um, in the solar system. And in terms of learning about them, NASA has been remarkably productive, say, since about uh, 1958 or so when we, they started launching space probes up to study the planets. And so it turns out, of course, Earth we know a lot about and we have a lot of satellites around them, uh, around it, so we won't worry too much about Earth. Mars, of course, um, is a planet that's always of great interest. And so I want to put a little O next to Mars because we've sent spacecraft to Mars to orbit Mars. So that's what I mean by O here. O will stand for, o will stand for orbit. And we've also, of course, landed on Mars. Okay. Um, Venus, Venus we've orbited also. And the Soviet Union, at least a long time ago, landed on Venus once. Mars has been orbited. Jupiter has been orbited, and I'll say land on on Jupiter in quotes because Jupiter is a big gaseous planet, but one of the space pr probes did drop part of itself into Jupiter and just descended down into the gaseous atmosphere until it, eventually, it was eventually crushed by pressure or melted by heat. And But, of course, the sensors beam back data on the way down. Um, Saturn, I believe, is the same way. Something has been dropped into Saturn. Uranus has been orbited, and Neptune has been orbited as well. So the point about doing this, about telling you this, is because it's not just about standing on Earth with a telescope sort of anymore to learn about the solar system and the planets. We have the technology to travel way out into the solar system and learn about these things. So you see, we've actually visited or landed on all of the planets in the solar system. And of course, you would love to always land on a planet, but orbiting a planet isn't bad either because you're getting really close to it, right? So suddenly cameras can pick up details that you couldn't otherwise or radar or sensors or whatever could learn things about the planet that you couldn't otherwise all the way here from Earth. Like if you wanted to know if Mercury, for example, had a magnetic field, hard to say here from Earth. But if you can get a probe up near Mercury, as we'll discuss, maybe you can put some sort of magnetic field sensor sticking out to map out Mercury's magnetic field. And that, of course, has been even done before. The reason why I'm telling you this is because Discoveries in astronomy, you might think, and it's a good thing to think at this level, that really where it comes from, most of it would come from then, would be basically you standing here on Earth. So here's Earth here, and here's maybe you standing on Earth here. And what you would try to do as an astronomer, or to study astronomy, is you'd get out your telescope, which is usually a long tube like this, and you would sort of, you know, look into it at... Uh, at the sky. And so you would just look up at the sky at night, at the planets, at the stars, at the whatever, and you'd try to learn as much as you can. And the point about astronomy is in this regard down here, they're very sort of a very crafty bunch. Why am I saying a crafty bunch? Because absent of all this great technology, and certainly space probes aren't the only way to observe the solar system, then maybe a space probe, probe, probe would go up and map out something you're not even fully interested in or whatever. Maybe it's not of much use to you or maybe it's the wrong planet. Like there's a lot of interest in Mars and a lot of money goes there, but the poor Mercury people, you know, aren't getting a lot of support from NASA, you know, that kind of thing. They're very crafty, as I'm saying down here, because everything that they do to learn about the solar system and the cosmos and beyond comes from, from just analyzing light that comes in from the cosmos, hits the Earth, to the point where it can be captured and analyzed by a telescope. Now that's pretty awesome when you think about it. So all you're doing to learn as much as we know about astronomy and the solar system, you know, which is a lot, but there's always still more to learn, is that you sit here on Earth like this, here you are, you know, once again, with your telescope here, and you just point it up at the sky, and you just wait for light to come in. You know, where, these, where does this light come from? Well. It comes from stars, it comes from planets, it comes from asteroids, and just et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And remembering, of course, that stars generate their own light, but planets, of course, and asteroids rely on light reflected from the sun. So in this context here, 
let me just draw a few of these things to make sure that we sort of have this all right. So I'll sort of draw the moon here, and I'll draw a star here, and maybe I'll draw an asteroid here, something maybe that looks, I don't know, maybe sort of a little bit of a rocky color. And of course, let me put the old sun in here because that's sort of, you know, what lights a lot of this stuff up. So here you are with your telescope, and you can point your telescope at the moon and learn about the moon just by looking at the light that comes from the sun, bounces off the moon, and goes into your telescope, right? You can learn about the moon that way. Likewise, if there's an asteroid over here, you could learn about the asteroid by allowing some light to go maybe behind the Earth like this, off the asteroid, boom, bounces off the asteroid and goes in your telescope that way. So you can learn about the asteroid that way. But of course, stars are the unique one here because they generate their own light, so I don't have to draw light coming off the sun going into off of the star, bouncing off the star. That light's going to go directly in your telescope. But the point is that, that I'm trying to make here is this craftiness of astronomers. They've just learned so much here just by... looking at light, looking at light. And sometimes in astronomy, for this reason here, light is called the great messenger because it brings in the secrets of the solar system and the cosmos to the patient, dedicated astronomer who may be sitting there in the cold, dark observatory at night collecting this light and looking at this light. So what we're going to get into in the next couple of videos is some of the consequences of this craftiness of astronomers to be able to use light to learn so much as they have about the cosmos. We'll talk about what is light and some things like that. So stay tuned in the next couple of videos. But just keep this exploration picture in mind. We have done a great deal with technology to travel close to planets, to learn about them. But the majority of the work, I would say, gets done by looking at the great messenger, which is light.